Outline 7, Roman numeral number 2. Uh, we're starting with a thermodynamic view of the world. And the world is broken down into two parts, the system and the surroundings. Uh, we won't spend too much time on this, but it is in the background going on with a lot of the calculations we're going to be doing. The system is the part of the world uh, which to which we are directing our attention. The surroundings are everything else. What we will see as far as the problems uh, we will be solving is that 75% of the time, or, or more actually, uh, for chemistry, the system is a reaction. Twenty-five percent of the time, the system is a material. And I'll show you what those that means coming up. A couple of examples of systems and surroundings. Uh, first is the dissolving of 10 grams of ammonium nitrate in water. We can write a dissolving reaction. Uh, this is ammonium nitrate. As it dissolves, it will go uh, from the solid state to the aqueous state or phase. And when it does, since it's a strong electrolyte, it will break up 100% into ions. Those ions are the ammonium and uh, nitrate ions. <clears throat> and what we're trying to say is that the system is going to be this reaction. So we can separate the world into this reaction and everything else. Now, uh, an example of when a material is a system is a pen is held 2.00 meters above the floor. Uh, we would call the system the pen. And then everything else will be the surroundings. Another thing that's going on in the background of what we're doing is state functions or state properties. We'll define what these state functions are. And uh, a state function <clears throat> is a function or property, and I'll, I'll refer to properties here. A property for which the initial and final states are independent of the path between those states. A property for which the initial and final states are independent of the path between them. And um, I got a bit of a bad photocopy here or a printout, but uh, a state function change in altitude is a state function because it depends only on the difference between the initial and final states, not on the path taken. So uh, uh, in this, we have a mountain and we have a walker that goes up the mountain like this, more or less, and then one that goes straight up the side of the mountain. And the change in altitude or the change in height is the same uh, no matter which path they take, yet the amount of work that the person did to go back and forth versus straight up would be different. So we're going to draw a distinction here. Heat and work are not typically state functions. Things that are state functions are going to be basically everything we care about in chemistry. So far, those have been pressure, so state functions. Pressure, volume, temperature. Uh, and we're about to introduce one more state function, and that's going to be H. 
and really delta H. And we'll talk more about those coming up. H will be the enthalpy. Delta H will be the change in enthalpy. A um, couple of the symbols I want to talk about here. We've seen that the symbol for work is W. Uh, we will now introduce that the symbol for heat is lowercase letter Q. <clears throat> now, let's come back to the work equation that we had before. We're going to be interested in what's called pressure volume work. And what we're going to do is we're going to derive an equation for pressure volume work um, in term, and we're going to start with the equation we had before, which is work equals a force times a distance. Although <coughs> I will keep the negative sign in there, and I have force times distance, that's a dot between them. And uh, I'm going to refer to this picture down here where I have a, a gas at an initial state P1, V1, T1, <clears throat> where I have an external pressure here, then I am going to reduce the pressure, so I have less force, less mass up here, less force. So I'm going to reduce the pressure, the gas will expand to a larger volume. We know that pressure and volume are inversely proportional to each other, so lower pressure, higher volume. And this wor the work that's done is it's going to move the gas and the piston back. So uh, there will be a distance here. Yep. There will be a distance, which we'll call delta x. That is a Greek, uh, that is basically a triangle. It means delta and delta x. And Okay, so uh, we have this equation work equals negative force times distance. Uh, what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to define an area A, which is the area of the piston, and it is also going to be the area uh, for the volume of this gas. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the right-hand side of this equation times A over A, which is 1, so it's still fair game. Math still works. What I'm going to do from there is I'm going to break this A up. Uh, write this over here. So I have force over A as one of my terms. Uh, instead of the D, I'm going to substitute delta X. And I'm going to keep my other A right there. <clears throat> and from here, we're very close to where we need to be for the equation that we'll use to solve problems. Force over area, we've previously defined that as the pressure. And delta X, which is here, times A, that's going to be the change in volume. So I will still keep my delta because it is still a change between the initial and final state. And now it's delta volume. And our final version, our working version, takes out the little dot and says that the work of a gas expanding is minus P delta V. Good. Now, as far as the units, we will have our pressures in atmospheres. We will have our uh, volumes in liters. So a unit of energy, an uncommon, pretty uncommon one, is uh, liter atmospheres. And the conversion from liter atmospheres into joules is one liter atmosphere equals 101.325 joules. <clears throat> Now what we want to do is we want to find the amount of work done on the surroundings when one liter of an ideal gas initially at a pressure of 10 atmospheres is allowed to expand at constant temperature to 10 liters 
by A, reducing the external pressure to one ATM, one atmosphere in a single step, and B, reducing uh, pressure first to five and then to one atmospheres. So to sketch this process, We initially start with one liter and 10 atmospheres. So here's our gas down here in the bottom. And in one step, we're going to expand gas. to 10 liters at one atmosphere. And we're gonna calculate the amount of work it takes to do that. So work equals, and this is A. Work is gonna be equal to minus P delta V. One thing to keep in mind is that the pressure that this process is occurring at is at one atmosphere and it will always be the final pressure that you use and plug into this equation. And the change in volume, well, change in volume will always be final volume minus initial volume. And that goes for everything in chemistry, as you'll see increasingly throughout the equations, this chapter in particular. So, Our final volume is 10 liters. Our initial volume is one liter. So that's gonna be nine liters times one atmosphere. Equals minus nine liter atmospheres. So that's the amount of work done by this gas as it pushes the piston away and pushes all that gas that was in here away as well. Now let's uh, do it the other way. So this is gonna be B. In step B, we're going to expand the gas to five atmospheres. Let's see if I can draw this the same way. So uh, oh wow. Well, uh, five ATM pushing down and uh, you can use P1, V1 equals P2, V2. So to show that this is going to be two liters, and this is going to be step one. And then in step two, we end up at the same place, 10 liters, one atmosphere, and what we're gonna do is there's gonna be a work associated with step one and work associated with step two. And then we're gonna add those two works together to get the total work. For step one, we have five atmospheres of pressure. And our volume are at the end of step one was two liters minus one liter for an amount of work here that is equal to uh, minus five liter atmospheres. For step two, and I should call this step one would be work one, step two will be work two, because I'm gonna add them up in a minute. Uh, I have one atmosphere I have 10 liters as my final volume, two liters. Oop. 10 liters minus two liters. Eight, let's see. Well. Eight liter atmospheres. So uh, as now to get my total amount of work for uh, B, I add them up, I get minus 13 liter atmospheres. And uh, two things that I will say about this. 
uh, first off is that the path by which this process occurs and the amount of work, work is not a state function or a state property. Work will be different depending upon the path that is taken. So, uh, so note, so work is not a state function. You get different works for different paths, which are different amounts of work, I guess I should say. So different amount of work. Different amounts of work for different paths. There we go. And uh, that's note one and note two is, I don't know if this is going to fit here, but I'll say it. It says, um, for smaller steps, so two-step process instead of one, you actually get more work out of the process. And that has a direct analogy to the amount of uh, work that you get out of a car if there are, uh, if you have a smaller engine. So think of smaller engine as uh, the um, as taking smaller steps to burn the same amount of gasoline. All right, I'm not going to write that, but that's in there.